Hey Fright fans, Scott from Fright Props here, back again with our servo skeleton prop. And for this video, I wanted to show you how we're actually gonna reinforce the structure of the prop. So you can see here that I've actually used one of these right angle brackets. We actually sell these for motors, but what I did when I was setting up the prop is I just used this and I screwed it into the skeleton. But we don't wanna rely on those screws for a permanent installation. So what we're gonna do with the help of my buddy Ezra here is we're gonna use some 14 gauge galvanized steel wire and we're gonna connect the metal pieces together. So this bracket with the bracket down here, and then we're also gonna connect the bracket for the uh, upper servo to the uh, beams there on the top. So I'll let Ezra go ahead and install those wires and we'll show you how we're gonna use those to shore up the prop, make it more durable for operation. So basically what we're doing here, we're just sort of twisting the wire into the holes here on the bracket, trying to create tension between these two spots, make it nice and tight so that it'll help hold the skeleton upright and take some of the pressure off those screws. All right, so with one of those in place, we're gonna go ahead and put one on the other side as well. All right, so with these in place, the next thing we're gonna do is actually use some Gorilla Glue adhesive. We're gonna put that between the skeleton and the bracket, and then we're gonna put another screw in here as well so that the screws, the Gorilla Glue, the wires, everything is working together to sort of hold this in place and add to the durability of the finished prop. So once that Gorilla Glue kicks, that's just gonna add another layer of uh, reinforcement. It's gonna hold the screws, the skeleton, the bracket, everything. It'll foam up and it'll grip all that stuff and should help hold it in place nicely. All right, so now we're gonna move to the upper part of the skeleton. We're gonna do something very similar here. We're gonna use that same steel wire to connect these uh, beams to the bracket here. But we're actually gonna put some Gorilla Glue in here first. So you could put Gorilla Glue in here before you screw this bracket to the skeleton also would be good, but we're gonna put the Gorilla Glue in here now. Then we're gonna use the uh, wire to sort of cinch it down so that the Gorilla Glue will foam up and, and help hold these two pieces together. All right, so same deal as before, we're gonna put a second piece of wire on the other side as well. Yeah, so what Ezra's doing here is he's sort of using the edge of the bracket as his uh, point to pry against so that he can really pull that wire tight before wrapping it around itself and securing it in place. All right, so there you can see how we've reinforced the actual structure of the skeleton. You can see it's actually sitting up much straighter now because it's not just relying on the screws that we put in during installation. We now have the backup here of these pieces of wire, two coming down here and two there. And then also that Gorilla Glue, when that sets, that's gonna add a whole nother level of adhesion that's gonna really keep the prop together, keep it solid. So the next step is gonna be trying to hide all this stuff. We're gonna do some painting and dressing. We'll cover that in just a second. All right, so the next step here is gonna be painting. So we have all these silver metallic servo parts here. And my first step is gonna be just to paint those to try to match the skeleton as best as I can. You can also paint any of the zip ties or screws that are exposed as well. A lot of this is gonna get covered up with dressing, but I might as well paint it first just in case, you know, I wanna have some of it exposed so it won't be super visible or it'll be easier to cover up with some light dressing on top. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually spray paint all these with a gray spray paint uh, just to get them started, uh, cover up that metallic look, and then we're gonna add some other colors on top of that to match this particular skeleton. All right, so the first paint we're gonna be using here is the Rust-Oleum. This is the coastal gray color satin protective enamel. And I'm just gonna paint the whole assemblies with that spray paint. Then next I'm gonna come in with some flat white and I'm gonna dust over some of those gray to try to bring that tone up a little bit to more match this color of the bone here. And lastly, we're gonna come in with this oregano satin color 
which actually kind of matches this pretty well. So that should hopefully be the last coat that we need to sort of bring this all together. And we can spray a little bit around the skeleton as well, just to make it all sort of match and blend together before we dress. All right, so with those pieces painted, they actually blend a lot better already. So whatever we can't blend in very well, we're gonna cover up with our dressing. So the next step is gonna add costuming to this. And I'm going for sort of a Reaper-ish kind of character. So I have a Reaper costume. We're gonna dress this in and we can add little bits of cloth and other dangles and stuff to sort of hide any of the mechanics that are still visible at the end. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right, so the costume that I'm gonna be using is this light up gauze zombie costume. I like this because it comes with the robe it also comes with a bunch of this creepy cloth that we'll be able to use to sort of dangle in different places and help uh, disguise any of the servo elements that we don't want to show. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and we're gonna dress the skeleton with it. All right, we're gonna start with our robe here and because I have the skeleton already posed the way I want, I'm actually gonna cut down the back of the robe and also down the back of the sleeve so that I can sort of just wrap it around and then I'll re-glue it on the other side. So that way I don't have to take all this stuff apart and put this back on in order to get to the skeleton. So just gonna cut straight down the back right here at the back of the costume and then down the back of each sleeve. All right, so I have draped the robe over the skeleton. I just sort of lined up the shoulders to kind of get my reference point and let the sleeves hang over the arms here. And I'm just gonna come in with the hot glue gun and I'm just gonna glue a couple of key points first, get the shoulders in place. Then I'll come in and I'll glue together the backs of the sleeves and then we'll glue some of the fabric up here probably to the base of the spine and just kind of go around and, and cover what we want. And we can always cut holes later to expose more bone if we want him to look a little more skeletal. So let's start with the shoulder. Then I'm just gonna start gluing the robe in place wherever I think it makes sense and looks good. So maybe I'll glue some here. I'm gonna bring the inside parts of the robe in here and I'm gonna glue those to the spine here. I'll then take the other uh, inside part of the robe, glue that here as well to kind of cover up this middle part. So I'm just gonna glue that on top of the existing piece there. Make sure I grab the right part of it here. Kind of come in, just glue that in place. I'm gonna just come around and glue this other sleeve closed. Then I'll just find places where I think I want to attach the clothing so that it doesn't fall away too much from the skeleton. So maybe we want to put a uh, dab of glue right here on the top of this forearm. And use that to hold this piece on. Basically anywhere that you want to make sure that the clothing stays put, doesn't fall too far away. And then we'll come back in and we can distress that later. All right, next up we'll put the hood on. So same deal, I'm just gonna add some glue here right at the top of the head. Come in with the hood piece. And then I'm gonna glue it on each side as well, here and here. I'm gonna add a piece of creepy cloth right here under the chin and down the neck to help hide the last of these little servo parts here. Then you can just test the movement, make sure nothing's binding up or gonna get caught. That looks pretty good. If we wanna add a more ragged and distressed look, you can just kinda grab this cloth and, and pull it, create some more holes in it. I always find it looks better the more kinda ripped up and, and gross it looks, the more rotten appearance it'll have. All right, and then we're gonna just kinda look for any place that we wanna hide a detail we're not super happy with. So this kinda joint to the uh, wrist here is a little bit funky, so I'm just gonna take creepy cloth. I'm just gonna wrap it up and let this dangle over. And that's gonna just sorta help hide that connection. I can even wind this through the fingers, help try to hide that zip tie. So this is really just kind of our, you know, cover up material that's gonna go ahead and, and let us sort of hide any of the parts that we're not 100% happy with or we don't wanna show uh, to the public once the prop is done. And then I'm just gonna glue that in place. I also don't love the look of these plastic joints here. They just scream plastic skeleton to me. So I'm gonna cover those up with some drapes of creepy cloth as well.
So of course there's no set rule for this stuff. I'm just looking for what I think looks cool, covering up what I think doesn't look cool and trying to make it not look too deliberate. So trying to avoid clean lines, trying to make everything look kind of distressed and rotten and gross. I'm gonna add a couple more creepy cloth dangles here in the front to sort of fill out this middle section, give it a little bit of the appearance of some more bulk. So it looks a little bit too hollow for me. When it comes to dressing Halloween props, my philosophy is that drapes, dangles, holes, ragged edges are all your friends. So just trying to create as much of that sort of variety and, and different textures and hangy grossness and rotted looking scraps as I can. And of course, your prop is your prop. You can do uh, whatever you feel like. If you want yours to be more skeletal, have less robes, you can certainly do that. You know, if you want to have it look like a totally different character, you can do that as well. This is part of the fun and expression. I feel like the Bob Ross of Halloween decorating right now, but this is your happy place and you do whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you think your prop looks cool. All right, one last step. We're actually gonna use a heat gun here to heat up some of these fingers so that we can actually change their pose a little bit. I think this hand's actually pretty good. This hand just looks a little bit too flat to me. So I'm gonna try to use a heat gun here, heat up these joints, bend those fingers just a little bit so that it has a little bit more of a natural pose. Mostly focusing on the joints here because that's where I want it to bend. Just gonna get them nice and hot and then bend them while they're still warm. So that looks a little better to me. All right, and one more thing. Um, I feel like every prop just needs a little bit of black spray paint here and there to sort of break up the colors that come with a lot of these fabrics. They do have some variation, but a little bit of black spray paint just helps break it up, adds a little bit more of that decayed look that we're going for. So I'm just gonna hit this in some spots. It's a little dusting of black spray paint, add a little bit of depth and contrast to the overall piece. All right, so there you have it, the finished product. If you've been watching these videos since the beginning, you know that we've installed three servo kits onto this skeleton. We have the head uh, lift and turn servo kit, we have the elbow or knee flex servo kit, and we have the waist turn servo kit. We've also reinforced the skeleton and dressed it to create this Reaper playing the violin character. Of course, your prop is your prop. If you wanna do something different, that is awesome. You can maybe show more of the skeleton if you want to. You can make it not playing the violin. It could be doing something totally different. The creativity is what we really love to see. So if you do come up with something using any of our kits or any of the tips or tricks that you've learned from these videos, I would love to see them. You can send them to me at sales at frightprops.com and I will check them out. I have one more video in this series where I'm actually gonna bring this prop really to the next level by adding a controller that's gonna allow me to not only control the servos but also control audio and do some DMX lighting. So that'll be the next video and the final video in this whole series. But for now, if you have any questions, of course, on anything you've seen so far, you can send an email to sales at or leave a comment on this video. And thanks so much, we'll see you next time.